I was always thinking of the scenario itself rather than what I've learned through my notes and stuff like that, right? So always use scenario information, think from the scenario's perspective, and then provide an answer uh, to you to the 50 mark question. Structure of my answer in the form of headings and subheadings as well, isn't it? I should also mention a conclusion for the performance report as well. So Hey everyone, this is Vishnu Vijay, ACCA, a proud Fintrammer who's been teaching students across the globe and across designations. And I welcome you all to this session where we will be debriefing one of the past paper questions for the Advanced Performance Management paper. So folks, as you can see here, I have a question taken from the December 2022 exam setting. So what we're going to do is we're going to debrief this 50 mark question and have a look at as to how we can efficiently gather points and score all the technical as well as professional marks that are available in this particular question. So let's get started, shall we? What is the first thing that we should read for any and every question? The requirement, isn't it? So let me just quickly open up the requirement window over here and see uh, what exactly is the requirement for this particular question, shall we? So it is now 1st of September 2000X5. And you have to write a report to the board of MADI to respond to instructions, to its instructions for work on the following areas. Okay. So we have to write a report to the board of directors, isn't it? So that's basically how usually all the 50 mark questions with an APM exam would be like. You either, either have to write a report to the board of directors or to a CEO of a particular company as well. In this case, our company is MADI Co, isn't it? And what else? Uh, we have to work on the following areas, that is performance reporting, minimum performance level cleanliness for 18 marks, and then transfer pricing proposal for 8 marks, and the performance reporting was for 14 marks, isn't it? So that gives us a total of 40 marks. And we have 10 professional marks available for uh, communication, analysis and evaluation, skepticism and commercial acumen, isn't it? So what exactly did we understand from the requirements? Well, basically nothing, isn't it? Nothing at all. Because the actual requirement of each and every APM question would be hidden within the scenario itself, okay? So carefully read the scenario and highlight that particular requirement from it. Now, uh, but we do have an idea that we would have to write a report, right? And I could see that there are professional marks available for communication skill as well, isn't it? So these are like the easiest marks in the exam. All you have to do is you just have to frame your answer in the format of a report, which is just providing to, from, date, subject, and then an introduction, and then the body of your answer, and where applicable, a conclusion as well. Simple as that, isn't it? And then uh, for analysis and evaluation, that's like easy to score because uh, you just have to make sure that you're providing a balanced opinion. I haven't read the requirement as of now, but I'm still telling you that, uh, you know, as long as you're providing a balanced opinion, which basically means that you have to provide all the positive side of things as well as the negative side of things in your answer. Okay, folks, that's how you score these marks. And skepticism and commercial acumen is basically achieved by demonstrating an awareness of the organization's business model. Okay, folks, so as long as you can, uh, you know, point out certain impressive points in the exam, you can easily score these marks as well. So just keep these points in mind. Now, uh, let's, let's get started by reading the scenario and by understanding what the actual requirement is, shall we? So I'm just gonna close this window for the moment. And let's get started with the company's information itself, shall we? I'm just gonna zoom it in so that all of you can view it as well. And as I'm reading the scenario, I'll be highlighting all those important instances which could be useful for my answer as well. So let's, let's get started. Maddy is a fast food chain which operates restaurants in several locations. Okay, so what is the business of this organization? It's a fast food chain, isn't it? And what else? It was established by the current board members who are all shareholders. When they opened first Maddie, uh, opened the first Maddie restaurant in 2002. Okay, so it's a recently, uh, you know, uh, recently established organization as in it's, it's only been like two or three years since they've started their operations, isn't it? And what else? The restaurant quickly gained a good reputation through positive customer reviews on social media for quality and price of its food. Okay, so I'll just highlight that particular instance as well. 
for its customer service okay that's also another asset and 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 for its cleanliness as well which is green and what else since then maddie has grown quickly by august 2005 it had opened another 12 restaurants under the maddie brand okay so it's a brand now isn't it and what else with the same overall business model product range and look and feel as the original restaurant okay fine what else Maddie's overall objective is to maximize shareholders' wealth. To achieve this overall objective, Maddie has two supporting aims: to increase the number of restaurants and to achieve like-for-like -like revenue growth of at least fifteen percent each year. Now, this is a key point, guys, because whenever it comes to a fifty-mark APM question, the objective is always important. Because that's basically the starting point of your answer. I'll tell you why shortly when we discuss the answer itself. But I'm just going to highlight this instance. There we go. So there are supporting aims as well, right? Uh, there are a few easy marks available for uh, you know mentioning these in your answer as well. And uh, yeah, let's read it through for the... Uh, let, let, let's read through the first supporting aim, shall we? So you know to operate... Sorry, to increase the number of uh, restaurants, isn't it? So, Maddie has ambitious growth objectives to increase the number of restaurants, including franchise restaurants. The, uh, though Maddie is a successful business, the lack of available finance has meant that the rate of opening its own new restaurants has recently slowed. Okay, so this last point is could be useful for my answer. So, I'm just going to keep it highlighted, right? They have a lack of you know, availability of finance, isn't it? So that is something uh, something of a point that I could mention. And what else? The board believes a key factor in achieving this is for Maddie to achieve industry leading. Oh, yeah, we're talking about like-for-like uh, -like revenue growth, isn't it? So, yeah. So to achieve that, the industry leading performance across a range of factors relating to quality of service. Okay. So these guys, what they think is, like, they could achieve like-for-like -like revenue growth in, uh, you know, by facilitating or by enhancing the quality of service itself. But that gives rise to a question though, what exactly is revenue, uh, like, 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 like for like revenue growth? Let's have a look at that, shall we? Like for like revenue growth is that achieved by means other than growth due to the opening of new restaurants and excludes growth from one-off events which may distort the uh, measurement of performance. So what this means is guys, uh, when it comes to, you know, growing a business or growing revenue, you could grow revenue by opening up new restaurants like for this particular, uh, you know, organization. Yes, but we're not talking about that. We're more talking on, uh, you know, uh, increasing the revenue by providing good quality services itself. Because if we provide good quality services, customers will like that and customers will maybe recommend our fast food chain for uh, to others as well, right? So like that, you know, growing like that is what, what is meant by like for like. Uh, revenue growth in this particular instance. Okay, that def definition is provided over here. Now, moving on. In order to help achieve its overall objective, Maddie has recently established eight franchise restaurants consistent with the first supporting aim to increase the number of restaurants, including franchise restaurants. Okay, so they're into franchising as well. There are a few franchising restaurants as well. One of these franchising restaurants is located in a neighboring country where Maddie's brand is not widely recognized as well. Okay, that seems relevant, isn't it? So in the neighboring countries, it's not a recognized brand yet, right? And we have one franchisee sitting on a neighboring country as well. Okay, what else? Each franchise is owned and managed by a franchisee and is operated as a business which is totally separate from Maddie. The franchisee pays franchise fees to Maddie and in return is able to trade under the Maddie brand. Okay, so the franchising operates based on a franchise fees, isn't it? Which is paid to Maddie by the franchisee, isn't it? So you keep that in mind. And what else? All, all food items, cooking equipment, fixtures and fittings, and marketing materials are provided to the franchisee by Maddie to the extent that from the customer's point of view, a franchise restaurant is indistinguishable from uh, one owned by Maddie. All right, guys. So the idea here is that whatever operations the franchise is conducting is exactly similar to what of that of Maddie. So, okay, folks. So that's basically the idea here. And uh, the franchise fees paid by the franchisee to Maddie have two elements. 
okay what are these two elements let's have a look a one off setup fee which varies in amount according to the size of the new franchisee that's basically the first element i'll just keep that highlighted for the moment and this covers most most of the cost of fixtures fittings and equipments as well as staff training and the initial marketing of the new restaurant in the local press and online using social media and pay-per-click advertising for some of the new franchises the setup costs incurred by madi have exceeded the setup fee agreed by the agreed with the franchisee and the board is keen to ensure that this does not happen in the future so what's the idea here guys this seems like a relevant point that i need to highlight isn't it so uh yeah what exactly is happening here so the idea here is that you know even though franchisees pay a fee to madi to you know get that franchising license what happens here is that uh you know it seems that in one particular instance there was a situation where the setup cost right the setup cost was more than that of uh the setup fee which is which ideally should not be the uh, case isn't it because ideally it should be the same isn't it it should not exceed as such so that that particular uh, aspect is mentioned over here as well so uh moving on to the second element the second element is that there's an ongoing fee of 10% isn't it uh, on of the franchisee's revenue uh, and this is paid to madi in return for provision of extensive uh it infrastructure and continuing it uh, marketing support and licenses to trade under the uh madi brand as well so there are two fees paid by the franchisee to madi one is the one off setup fee and uh this is dependent on the size of the uh sorry this is ba this basically covers all the costs of all the uh you know fixtures and fittings and all these things that they're setting up for isn't it so that's basically one thing and then uh secondly there is that ongoing fee of 10% of the franchisee's revenue which is paid to madi for having this license and for certain it related uh investments as well okay folks which is mentioned over here so just keep that point in mind as well and what else all food items must be purchased by the franchisee from madi and the cost of these are additional to the franchise fees as well okay that makes sense as well and uh what else yeah we have exhibit 2 i'm just going to open this up there we go so exhibit 2 basically states that before madi continues with the next phase of its growth plans the board has asked you for advice relating to performance relating to uh performance reporting at madi okay so what do they want us to do the board wants you to evaluate whether the current performance report in appendix 1 which it uses on a quarterly basis okay so they're using the report on a quarterly basis which is kind of strange because you know ideally performance refu reviews should happen a bit more frequently than that isn't it so that's what i think so i'll just uh, highlight that point for the moment and the board has instructed that you are not required to evaluate the performance of any aspect of mani's business so this is a really really important point that the examiner stresses out here that uh, you know you should not comment on things like the revenue has increased the pattern is like going on an increasing basis or the costs have decreased etc all those points will not get you marks in the exam okay folks so we have to evaluate the performance dashboard within appendix 1 okay folks we have to evaluate this particular dashboard over here and we are not required to comment on the performance okay folks that's not our job our job is just to evaluate this particular dashboard to identify the positives and identify the negative points within this dashboard as well okay folks it's simple as that so let's have a quick look at the dashboard itself uh we have we we'll basically have an extract of the statement of profit and loss isn't it uh we have the revenue and cost of sales of madi owned restaurants as well as for franchise restaurants given on a quarterly basis and we have prior data from 2000x4 to 2000x2 as in since the day in which they've probably incorporated and uh what else we have gross profit ratio gross profit margin ratio as well and then uh a few notes given to us what does this note say yeah this is for the revenue and cost of sales isn't it as to what these are okay and then uh yeah we have the roce provided to us which is a 
which is an okayish, you know, measure to measure the uh, you know maximization of shareholder wealth, I would say. And uh, what else? We have some non-financial data, do we? Yeah, the number of restaurants like Maddie owned and franchisee is given to us on a yearly basis, and some non-financial performance measures such as cleanliness and delivery, food delivery time is also given. And why are these points? Well, it says here that you know. The average ranking out of a score of five. Okay, it's it's basically customer rating, isn't it? So that's basically why it is given as such. Okay, so this is basically how the dashboard looks like. And we have to identify some positives and negatives for how many marks? We have to identify that for a total of 14 marks, isn't it? So that's one key point that you have to always keep note of within the requirements tab. Okay, folks, how many marks are each of these areas for? Because we don't want to waste our time writing too much or nor do we want to t write too less as well, isn't it? So which is why it's always important to have a look at the marks available. Now there are 14 marks available, which basically means that you need to think of 14 points, isn't it? 14 marks worth of points. You could assume one, uh, one uh, you know, mark per relevant point here. So let's go by that approach itself, shall we? So uh, what all things can we identify from over here? Well. I would say that there's a lower proportion of non-financial data, right? It's just two things. And uh, you could comment on things based on the objective of the organization as well, right? And uh, I could see too much information, to be honest, you know, the, for, a, for, a, uh, for an organization to take strategic decisions, I would say that, you know, there's too much information available over here. And what else? Uh, yeah, rather than showing the, you know, revenues and all other details from 2000 x2 they could just summarize the information and just show the revenue growth or pattern or something like that right that could could have been possible and they're just providing the extracts of uh you know uh like they are providing gross profit ratio over here which is gro like gross profit divided by sales right but are they considering operating profits or the percent any ratios in relation to operating profits as such no not really right that's something that you can mention and uh, yeah, there are a few other points as well, which I've noted as well, which we can discuss when discussing the answer. Okay, folks. So this, these are a few rough things that I noted. And uh, yeah, we could, you and remember guys, this is an evaluation, isn't it? So if you look at the requirement, it says they want you to evaluate, you know, the current uh, performance report, isn't it? So evaluate can mean both the positives as well as the negatives as well. Okay, folks. So just keep your uh comments in a balanced manner so that you can get those professional marks for analysis and evaluation as well okay folks so just keep that in mind so i'm just gonna close all this and move on to the next exhibit real quick minimum performance levels what's the idea here let's have a look all franchisees are subject to minimum performance levels set by maddie across a range of financial and qualitative measures if a franchisee fails to meet these levels, a board member will visit the franchisee to support, uh, to help support them to improve performance, which is great, which is kind of nice, yeah, isn't it? So yeah, moving on. Continued failure could lead to termination of the franchise. Okay, so if the franchisees are not able to perform well within the standards, within the quality standards as per you know Maddie Co, then the overall franchise agreement will be terminated. Okay, folks, that's basically what is mentioned over here. And what else? Maddie has also recently started to collect data relating to cleanliness of the franchise uh, restaurants. And cleanliness is one measure subject to minimum performance levels and is measured using customer surveys. Okay. And customers will fill out a paper form uh, giving just one overall score between one to five for cleanliness and other uh, and some other aspects of the quality of service and place these in a box in exchange for a chance to win a free meal. Yeah, chance to win a free meal as well. Okay, so I see something wrong here. I see multiple things wrong here, to be honest. First of all, customer service. There are a few disadvantages of, you know, having, uh, you know, customer service itself. So I can maybe mention that in my answer. I don't know what the requirement specifically is, but I feel like that's something that I need to mention. And uh, what else? And yeah, they're conducting the survey in exchange for a free meal. So what if they would just, you know, may not provide an honest opinion 
and they may randomly click a few numbers here and there just to get the free meal, right? That's also a possibility, isn't it? That's something that I can mention as well. And what else? The franchisee collates these responses onto a spreadsheet at the end of each quarter and sends a summary of results to Maddie, uh, Maddie for inclusion in the next performance report. Hmm. So if let's say that they have conducted the customer survey and they have identified some performance issues and stuff like that. Okay, folks, my question is simple. Like in the next quarter, like in this particular quarter, or quarter end, they will be assessing all of these customer surveys, right? So within a particular quarter itself, we're not uh, we're not taking any measures into rectifying that performance issues, which may have identified may have been identified within the first month of the quarter itself, right? So there's a delay in processing these customer surveys due to this quarterly process. We could have made it monthly or maybe even weekly for that matter as well, isn't it? So that's basically something that we could suggest. But uh, what is the requirement though? Let's have a look. The work the board requires on this area is in two parts. Firstly, the board would like you to explain the difficulties in interpreting data about cleanliness and advise it on the problems they may be uh, there may be with the data on cleanliness received from the franchisees. So yeah. Uh, so my intuition was correct, isn't it? So basically they want us to, uh, you know, comment on these customer surveys. Like, is it is it appropriate? What are their, what are the challenges or difficulties in doing this, etc. Okay, folks, that's the first part. And uh, I believe I saw a breakdown over here. Uh, yeah, I'll get into that. The second part of the requirement is that the board has then asked you to recommend and evaluate possible alternative methods to assess the area of cleanliness as well. What other things can we do if customer survey is not the solution? Okay, folks, that's another thing that you have to recommend as well. Now, if you look at the requirements over here, you can see that uh, the mark, the total of 18 marks available within this area is split into two, isn't it? 10 marks for the first part, and then eight marks for the second part over here as well. Okay, folks, that's basically how it's uh, split. So just keep that point in mind as well. Okay, folks. And I could think of a few points from, from my end as of now. So yeah, what else? Let's have a look at the third requirement and then discuss the answers, shall we? So within the third requirement, as you can see here, I have, yeah, I have a transfer pricing proposal. Okay, what does this mean? Let's have a look. In 2000X5, the first Maddie franchise restaurant established in a neighboring country was opened. Okay, makes sense. Uh, and we noted this in the company information itself, right? And what of it? This restaurant is geographically close to Maddie's warehouse from where it distributes food items on its own uh, restaurants and franchises in its home country. Okay. Food items can move freely between the two countries. And there are no tariffs or administrative barriers in doing so, which is great, isn't it? There's no additional cost as such as a result. And what else? Maddie usually negotiates fixed prices uh, with food suppliers for one year. So it is also able to fix the price it charges franchisees for food items for the same period. Okay. So it's usually a negotiation model. And what else? The franchisee in the neighboring country, while accepting that it must purchase all food items from Maddie, has asked if it can be charged of these at the market price it would pay for the nearest equivalent product in its own country, which is a reasonable suggestion, isn't it? And uh, the board has asked you to evaluate the franchisee's proposal. So we just what we have to do here is, we have to evaluate this proposal and look into its advantages as well as disadvantages for the organization as a whole and for Madico as well. Okay, folks, so that's basically as to what you have to do over here. And for how many marks? For eight marks, isn't it? Eight relevant points. All right, folks. So that's basically as to what we need to do for this particular question. That's basically as to what the scenario is all about. Now, let's think of how to structure our answers, shall we? Let's have a look. So folks, I'm going to open up the response option over here, the word processor. And the first thing that I'm going to do is, first of all, copy paste all the requirements section to my response option. What all requirements were there? One was this one. I'll just control C. 
and then paste it over here and this is my first requirement isn't it regarding the review or evaluation of the current performance report and secondly I have the second one over here which is uh, you know a two-part requirement I would say I'll we'll paste it over here and say two and then the second part and then the third one this is step one and the second step would be to write the structure of the report okay folks there should be a to there should be a from date subject and then an introduction as well so let me quickly show you how exactly uh, you know these should be structured and these are like the easy marks in the exam as I mentioned earlier isn't it so uh, who is it addressed to board of directors of Maddie Co and who is it from from you, isn't it? You could be, let's say, a performance expert. And the date, what was the date? Do not use the real time date. This is a mistake that a lot of students make because it's specifically mentioned in the requirement that it is now 1st September 2005, isn't it? So I'm just going to mention that date over here. And what is the subject? Well, based on the requirement, I can say performance assessment of Madico or you know what let's uh, try a different uh, you know title I would say or my subject would much rather be performance reporting of Madico because we're not assessing the performance right which is why I'm just uh, you know changing the subject like that and uh, now moving on to introduction now this is fairly easy I would say because all you have to do is you just have to copy paste all these requirements paste it over here and then type this to say that this report includes includes what there's an evaluation of the current performance report I'll remove the appendix one. I don't need the rest of the line. And the difficulties in interpreting data about cleanliness and I will say possible solutions and I'll say this report further includes a recommendation You know what? I, I don't need this line, right? So I'll just remove this. Recommendation of possible alternative methods to assess the area of cleanliness, as well as an evaluation. Of the franchisees proposal so you see what I did here all I did was I just converted the list of requirements that I had into some introduction sentences simple as that okay folks so you can just do the same within the exam as well so that you don't waste too much time you know writing an introduction or a half page introduction or something like that okay folks it can just be a two-liner with uh, with the objectives of that particular report simple as that now moving on to uh, the next part Let's get to the main portion, shall we? So what is the main portion? Basically, the uh, answer, isn't it? 
So I'm just going to convert these requirements into headings now. First of all, I'll say evaluation. of the current performance report simple as that I don't need the rest of the lines so what all points can I write here let's think about that shall we and I'll just bold these you know slide formatting wouldn't hurt right so yeah there we go so I need to write around 14 points, right? We have 14 marks, so 14 points. So what all will I write for this particular answer? Let's think about it, shall we? So folks, the first and foremost thing that you can do here is open up the company information over here and then copy the objectives, control C, and paste it over here. Okay, folks, because the overall performance report should contain measures that measure the extent to which we have achieved the objectives of the organization, isn't it? And that's exactly what we are trying to focus on over here. Okay, folks, so first of all, I'll copy paste this particular uh, overall objective and break it down a bit, right? It's already broken down for us, so I'll just uh, mention this. Uh, so Maddie's overall objective is to maximize shareholders' wealth by doing two things, right? What are these two things? One is over here to increase the number of restaurants, and then two is over here. Two, achieve like for like revenue growth for at least 15% each year. Now, we have to first of all look at as to whether there are measures, as to whether there are measures within the performance report which measures these things. Like, uh, first of all, the ultimate objective, maximization of shareholders' wealth. Do we have any measure that could measure this within the report? Let's have a look. In Appendix 1, we have Revenue, Cost of Sales, Gross Profit, and then we have ROCE, right? ROCE can extend, the, the ex like, can measure the profitability of things and the return on investment, yes. But is it, an, is it an exact measure or a directly linked measure to this particular objective? No, not really, isn't it? So we can mention that point, isn't it? So I'll just mention that uh, the report... The performance report includes ROCE, which can be linked to the objective of maxima shareholders' wealth maximization. However, as this is not a directly linked measure, it would be recommended to use absolute measures like what, what can we, uh, you know, recommend here? We're just saying that the existing measure of ROCE is, you know, not a directly linked measure to, uh, directly linked measure to that particular objective. Instead, we can use two measures. Okay, folks, what all two measures can we suggest? Well, uh, I could suggest total shareholders return, which is basically, uh, you know, growth in share price, share price plus dividend. That's something that we can recommend. Or we can also, uh, you know, recommend economic uh, EVA, isn't it? Economic value added as well, isn't it? There we go. So that's that would be one of our recommendations. And what else? For the other two supporting objectives, do we have any measures available? To increase the number of restaurants, do we have a measure within the appendix which measures this? Most definitely yes, isn't it? Uh, because if I look at, at the end over here, yeah, we have data in relation to the number of restaurants which are opened each year. 
which are owned by by the particular uh, you know organization, both Maddie owned as well as franchisee restaurant, which is owned each year, isn't it? So we just have to look at as to whether it's increasing, and as you can see, it is right. But you know, you should not in any way mention the performance level. Okay, folks, you should not mention that Maddie Co has you know opened new restaurants compared to the previous year or anything like that. Why? Because if you look at the requirement over here, it says it specifically states that you are not interested or you're not required to uh, evaluate the performance of Medico's business, isn't it? So you should not mention points like there was an increase in revenue or a decrease in cost or, you know, they open new restaurants, etc. You just have to comment on the report as a whole. How is it structured? What all measures are there? Are they valid? Are they in line with the company's objective? This is what you have to mention. Okay, folks. Now, uh, moving on to my answer. I'll just mention that uh, the number of restaurants owned by Maddie and franchisee, franchise uh, restaurants, or I'll mention uh, the number of franchise restaurants owned each year has been mentioned within the performance report and this is in line with the supporting objective of increasing the number of restaurants or achieving growth by increasing the number of restaurants. That's a positive point, isn't it? Because you have to provide balanced views on questions like these. Okay, folks, which is why I included a positive point as well. And what's the next item? To achieve like for like revenue growth of at least 15% each year. Do we have any such, uh, you know, measures which measure that? Not exactly, right? I mean, we do have the revenue figures as, as well as the uh, gross profit figures as well. However, does that directly, men uh, like directly measure the like for like revenue growth? No, not really, isn't it? So that's basically something that we can mention, isn't it? So uh, it was noted was noted that there are no measures included within the performance report which mentions or which measures the aim of achieving like for like revenue growth of at least 50% each year therefore this needs to be included within the report that's a suggestion right Well, another point that I could mention here is that if you look at the company information, it was mentioned somewhere that we are, yeah, like if you look at the appendix, first of all, we do have gross profits, isn't it? Gross profit percentage provided to us, isn't it? However, well, gross profit percent, what, what is the equation there? It's basically gross profit divided by sales, simple as that. 
So we are, uh, you know, having a measure that compares sales with profits. However, are we measuring the extent of cost involved anywhere? No, not really, isn't it? We do have the absolute amount of cost of sales given to us. However, you know, nothing specifically measures the, uh, you know, cost reduction or the or, or the rate at which cost is like changing year by year, etc. Right. So that particular point can be mentioned here. And why is that relevant? If you think about it, well, uh, if, in the company information, in the second, uh, you know, point that is mentioned over here, it was mentioned that uh, on an, an ongoing fee of 10% of the franchise's revenue is paid to Maddie in return for provision of an extensive IT infrastructure, continuing IT and marketing support, and license to trade under the Maddie brand as well. And then there are several other, uh, you know, costs which are incurred by Maddie for these franchisee restaurants as well, which is mentioned over here as well, isn't it? So, uh, you know, are we having something that something included within the performance report that measures these certain level amounts of cost? No, not really, isn't it? So that's basically why we're mentioning that point. Okay, folks, so I'll uh, mention that uh, particular point like this. <clears throat> the performance report. shows the gross profit margin on a yearly basis. However, we have noted that, or however, it was noted that, not we, uh, it was noted that there has been no focus on the operating costs incurred by Maddy considering that there are and again, I'll copy paste some lines with the from the uh, scenario itself, okay, folks. There are these items, right? There we go. Extensive IT infrastructure and continuing IT and marketing, uh, not support expenses. It would be great if there are measures which shows the year on year fluctuations in expenses operating expenses okay folks so what have i done here i've mentioned a point that i noted and i've linked it to the scenario as well isn't it this is how you get professional marks in the exam okay folks whenever you see an instance within the particular scenario that can be linked to your answer just do that okay folks just do that to get those you know professional marks available as well now uh yeah it's either year-on-year uh, -year fluctuations or you can say, uh, you know, percentage of cost or something like, uh, uh, or cost as a percentage of, let's say, sales or any other figure for that matter as well. Okay, folks? So, yeah. And uh, what else? What other points uh, can I mention over here? I'll open the appendix once again. We talked about gross profit. And one thing that I can note here, now let's look for things presentation-wise, okay, folks? Now, if you look at things presentation-wise, you could be able to see that, you would be able to see that there's too much information in the appendix, right? As in, there is, first of all, an extract of the, uh, you know, statement of profit and loss, and then there's gross profit, and then there's categorization between Maddie-owned restaurants as well as uh, Maddie franchise restaurants. There is year-on-year -year data since the year 2002, as well as quarterly data as well, 
right? And then there's non-financial information given over here as well. And basically, yeah, there's too much information given within this particular appendix, isn't it? Therefore, what we have to do is, we can mention that point. Okay, folks, we can mention that, uh, you know, uh, this performance report or the performance report or mention that it was noted that the performance report is currently overloaded with information considering that this report will be used by by the strategic management in order to make strategic decisions it would be advised to eliminate unnecessary information from the uh, report as too much information can confuse the executive level management. Okay, folks, so what have I said done here? I've just mentioned that, you know, there's too much information at the moment. And, uh, you know, it's ideally, we should eliminate unnecessary information from the report as it can confuse or too much information can confuse the executive level uh, management. Okay, folks, uh, who require, I'll just add one more line, who require summarized information because at the executive level all the ceo cfos board of directors senior managers etc they all need summarized information rather than information with too much detail okay folks so that's basically the overall idea here so i mentioned that point i'll get some marks over there and what else what other points uh you know can i mention here so folks another point that we can mention here is basically uh the fact that there is there is no balance of financial and non-financial data, isn't it? Because, you know, there is non-financial data. However, you know, ideally, in an ideal, uh, you know, performance report, the financial and non-financial data should be balanced, right? As of now, there is too much financial and, uh, you know, just too non-financial data. That's just it. Okay, folks, so that, that point can be mentioned as well. So let's mention that particular point. Uh the performance report seems to have a greater proportion of financial measures as compared to non-financial measures. Ideally, the report should be or should have a balance between financial and non-financial measures. as these can be as these can enable the management to be or enable the board 
to be more forward looking. As financial measures are historical data or historical information which is more backward looking in nature there we go simple point isn't it so it's a basic point which we have learned through the syllabus as well. I'm just applying it in this particular question, simple as that. So uh, yeah, that's uh, another point as well. And what else can be mentioned? Once again, uh, there's no commentary as such, right? Regarding the performance uh, overall, isn't it? Ideally, a performance dashboard would have at least some commentaries regarding certain performance-based, uh, you know, information or performance level of that particular organization. But I couldn't really see any commentary over here as well. So maybe I can just mention that point as well, right? Uh, so I'll just say that the report does not include, or the performance report, does not include any commentary regarding the measures which are involved and therefore this can make the report less user friendly why why exactly does it make the report less user friendly well because the users need to understand the meaning of some of those measures, right? So uh, there are notes, yes. However, uh, you know, in order to in order to easily grasp the performance level of that organization or easily grasp certain, uh, you know, things like, for example, uh, they've included cleanliness over here, right? Yeah, they've included things like cleanliness and stuff like that, which is a judgmental figure. So how exactly is this calculated? Uh, they have mentioned that there's an average ranking out of uh, out of a score of five. However, there's a few other uh, you know calculation aspects mentioned over here as well, isn't it? So how exactly was was the survey conducted? Like, is it is it customer survey or not, right? Or uh, you know how was the survey conducted? Or what is the overall uh, you know performance assessment of this organization? All these things would be mentioned in commentary sections. You, uh, I believe, you may have seen certain commentaries in certain questions, uh, certain you know performance dashboard questions as well. So that particular commentary should be there and it has it is not currently uh, included within this particular report. So just uh, you know mention that particular point simply as well. Okay folks, simple as that. And uh, what else? What other points can be included? There are no industry averages given in the figure, sorry, given in the report, right? Are we comparing anything to industry averages? No, not really, right? Because they do have revenue and cost and stuff like that, but nothing is compared to the industry average, not even profits, right? So we can mention that particular point as well. Uh, it was also noted that there are no comparisons made to external or made to the industry averages. For example, Uh, the the revenue growth percent can be compared with that of the industry or with uh, compared with the 
industry average growth in order to get insights on how Medico is performing compared to the industry, isn't it? Compared to the other players in the industry. Simple as that. Again, another valid point, isn't it? I'll get marks for this. And uh, what else? While reading the scenario, I noted a point, isn't it? I marked it here somewhere, yeah. So, uh, not this one. There it is. Though Maddie is a successful business, the lack of available finance has meant that the rate of opening its own uh, new restaurants has recently slowed, isn't it? So this is a key factor, isn't it? Lack of availability of finance. So maybe we can include something uh, within the within the performance report that can enable uh, the organization to keep track of this, because you know finance is a limiting factor, right? So maybe we could suggest that hey, why don't you include some measures to keep track of the level of finance available and how much have we utilized or something like that, right? Uh, and uh, the need for finance on a yearly basis or something like that, okay folks? So any such measures can be included within the report as well, isn't it? So that's something that we could suggest as well. So let's quickly write that point, right? As the availability of finance is a factor that slows down Madico's business it would be suggested to include measures in relation to the financial position of Madico's business or its ability to raise finance as well. You could also include ratios like maybe gearing ratios or something like that to ensure that, uh, you know, uh, the financial risk aspect of this particular organization. Okay, folks, so that's, that's basically something that you could suggest as well. And uh, what else, guys? What other points can we include? Well, we have made quite a lot of points now, isn't it? So let me just quickly look at how many points we've made here. Let's remove this. I could also mention this point that states that uh, for a for an organization like Madico, who focuses on growth by providing quality of service or uh, focus on achieving growth by providing quality uh, quality service There is currently no measure within the performance report that measures the quality of service 
provided by Madico or its franchisees. Isn't it? So this is a valid point, right? Because what all information do we have? We just have the cleanliness and food delivery time, right? These are just some of the aspects of the quality, isn't it? So uh, are we like conducting any other, like ideally there should be more, uh, what do you say? Like indirectly we are measuring quality through like looking at the number of uh, restaurants open because you know, if, if it's a successful business, if, we, if they're delivering quality service, then you know, more and more restaurants will open up. However, if you look at the, you know, objective, especially like for like revenue growth, their primary focus is by growing according to the level of quality, right? That's basically what was mentioned over here. Yeah, the board believes that the key factor in achieving this is for Maddie to achieve industry leading performance across a range of factors relating to quality of service. So are we measuring quality of service anywhere? No, not really, isn't it? So that's basically the point that has been mentioned over there. And uh, another point would be, if you look at the performance dashboard itself, do we have a bifurcation of this particular cleanliness and food delivery time for both uh, Maddie owned restaurants as well as, uh, you know, uh, as well as the Maddie franchised restaurants? No, not really, isn't it? So for the non-financial data, okay, so I'll just mention this point as well. For the non-financial data provided, it was noted that these are aggregated amounts and are not or it does not and yeah it does not provide a bifurcation of cleanliness and food delivery time rating of both Maddie owned restaurants and Maddie franchised restaurants. Okay folks that particular point can be mentioned. And for this point relating to quality, I could also suggest something to get some additional marks as well, isn't it? So what can I suggest? I could suggest uh, things like, uh, you know, it would be suggested to include objective measures like, let's say, average customer waiting time food delivery time instead of ratings or average, I would say, on time delivery, etc. Okay, folks, something like this. So I've recommended a point as well, isn't it? So I'll get additional marks for that as well. Okay, folks, so quite a few points now, isn't it? So how many points are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen. Okay, folks, so fourteen points have been mentioned, isn't it? So that, that's basically it, okay, folks? So I just provided 14 points over here and I'll get marks for all these 14 points as well. Simple as that. Now, uh, moving on to the next part of the requirement. So we have two sections over here, isn't it? So let's have a look at as to how to solve this one, shall we? So I'm just gonna convert this into headings, first of all. Okay. 
My first setting would be difficulties in interpreting data about cleanliness. And the problems there might be within the data on cleanliness received from franchisees as well, right? Okay, fine. So this should be my heading. So what should be my first point here? I can reopen this particular thing to, for your reference. So folks, the idea here is that there's a situation where the performance levels of each of the franchisees will be assessed by Maddie on a regular basis, right? So uh, if they meet, the, if they fail, if they fail to meet uh, the uh, appropriate quality measures or quality standards, then the franchise agreement will be terminated. That's basically how it works. Now, how do they obtain the uh, data for cleanliness exactly it's a score of one to five conducted through customer surveys isn't it as per this particular question sorry as per this particular scenario they're doing this by customer surveys and is there any disadvantages to customer surveys most definitely yes isn't it customer survey on its own is a subjective measure so first of all i'll just mention that particular point uh the data for calculating the cleanliness is obtained through customer service, which is a subjective measure. Okay, folks, that's basically something that I mentioned over here. And uh, therefore, this can be, or this is vulnerable to manipulation, to manipulation, something like this. And another point that I can mention is that if you think about it logically, we're rating it from one to five, isn't it? So let me ask you this. If I get a customer review from one to five, and let's say that one of my customers have provided me with a rating of, let's say, 3.5, what does that mean exactly? What exactly was the point which that customer didn't like? Will I be able to know that? No, not really, right? So that's another point that I can mention over here as well. Give folks simple as that. So uh, the score, of one to five can give the organization an idea about the satisfaction level of the customer. However, it does not provide It does not provide an indication or it, pro it does not provide the reason as to why the customer was dissatisfied. See folks, that's another drawback of this particular customer survey, isn't it? And uh, what else? There will also be situations where customers may just choose the extreme extremes. That is either one or five and which may not be reflective of their actual opinion. 
And uh, another valid point that I can, uh, you know, mention here is that considering that, uh, you know, considering that the customers as are provided with a free meal or with the chance of getting a free meal after the customer survey there's a risk that the customers may just attend or may not may just uh, provide either positive or or I can just say I provide an opinion just for the sake of getting the free meal rather than reflecting their actual opinion on the organization's service. This is yet again another uh, actual issue, isn't it? So there is a chance that uh, the customers may just provide uh, yeah, uh, there's a chance that they may just provide the customer survey just to get the free meal rather than, you know, providing an honest opinion so that the organization can improve themselves, right? So that particular point has also been mentioned over here. And what else? The data can be and how many marks are available here? There are 10 or ten and 8 marks, right? 10 marks for the first part of the requirement and 8 marks for the second part of the requirement. So for the first part, have I obtained 10 marks? Let's see. 1, 2, 3, and 4 points. So that's not enough. Let's just add more points. The data... Uh, okay, I could make a suggestion here by stating that the data can be used or can be obtained to create more objective measures instead of using subjective measures like customer surveys. But if you are suggesting something like this, if you are suggesting that, hey, we can use an objective measure rather than a you know, subjective measure, you have to also add value to the point. As in, you have to suggest or give them some idea as to what kind of objective measures are we talking about, right? So I'll just mention that. I'll just mention an example here. For example, we could, we could, uh, yeah, or the organization could keep track of the frequency of cleaning shifts done, right? So in every organization, when, when a particular cleaning is done, they, they, there's always uh, you know, a record kept, like how many times have a certain, let's say restroom or a certain uh, like restaurant area been, has been cleaned per day, right? Is it in the morning? Is it in the afternoon? Is it in the evening? Are there three times, four times, etc. Right? All these things could be kept a track of, right? So that's basically something that I'm suggesting over here. Okay, folks, so the frequency of, uh, you know, of the cleaning shifts. We can keep a track of that, right? And uh, yeah, that's just enough. Okay, folks, we don't have enough time to you know give them too much of a recommendation, right? So I'm just stopping at one. 
And uh, what else? Have I scored the mark that I needed? Yes, I have, right? Uh, five marks over here. And uh, I need five more to do what? Yeah, I need five more marks that that comments on, that advises on its problems, whether they, they may be, uh, you know, in the data on cleanliness and received from franchisees as well. Okay, so uh, the data received from franchisees. Now, those are potential to be, there is a potential for those to be manipulated, right? So that's basically what I'm mentioning over here. Now, uh, yeah, let me just talk about that. <clears throat> uh, there is a risk that the data received from franchises may not be accurate. This is because there is no control or there are no controls in place to ensure whether these data are calculated appropriately therefore there is a potential risk of manipulation for the data received from the franchisees And I'll just add this as a next point and see as there and uh, I could mention the reason why there's potential for manipulation right uh, as they as they may be motivated to show good results so that the franchise agreement is not terminated. Okay, folks, so that's a potential motivation that these franchises would have, right? So if they, you know, there is a potential uh, possibility that they can show good results so that the franchise agreement still continues and won't be terminated as such. Okay, folks, so that particular point has been mentioned. And uh, what else? Another point that I could state is regarding the timeliness of the data as well, right? Because if I look at the scenario, uh, yeah, it says here that the franchisee collates their responses onto a spreadsheet at the end of each quarter, isn't it? Isn't there a delay there? Because if there is some sort of a quality issue or something, then we can only identify that or Madico can only identify that at the end of a quarter, isn't it? It cannot be identified and rectified then and then, right? So that particular point can be mentioned over here. Okay, folks, so yeah, I'm just going to say that, uh, you know, as the data for reporting cleanliness is processed on a quarterly basis, there would be a delay in identifying any quality issues that are there within the franchisees. Therefore, instead of Yeah, therefore, instead of uh, reporting these data 
at the end of each quarter it would be suggested that suggested yeah that the organization takes measures take uh take measures to conduct this activity on a more frequent basis so that issues can be identified and rectified on a quicker basis okay folks simple as that okay folks so that's something that we could also suggest as well isn't it first of all i'm saying that currently there's a delay in taking action right and uh now i'm suggesting that hey why don't you do this on a uh, a bit more frequent basis uh or maybe i should mention what uh what kind of uh such as uh yeah i'll just mention such as uh, a weekly or even monthly basis or you know what monthly uh is too too long as well simply or real time so that the issues can be identified and rectified uh by the by medicos management on a quicker basis okay folks so that's another valid point that carries around you know two to three marks as well okay folks so it's a valid point so i'm just gonna mention that over here and yeah that basically covers almost everything isn't it simple as that now uh moving on to the uh next part of this particular question what was it again we have to comment on we have to recommend and evaluate possible alternative methods right so i'll just mention that heading recommended possible alternatives to assess the area of cleanliness to ii there we go so what can we suggest over here all right the first thing that i could recommend here is that maybe madico can conduct an inspection on these franchisees on a more frequent basis right so that's something that we can do just to ensure that everything is or every process is being conducted uh on a frequent basis or, or, or on an appropriate basis etc right so that's basically something that i can recommend uh it would be recommended that madico conducts frequent management inspections on their franchisees in order to ensure that there are no quality related issues by doing this any quality issues can be identified on a more quicker basis an appropriate action actions such as rectifying the errors or rectifying the issues or termination of franchises can be taken accordingly okay folks so that's one aspect of it but guys as a professional 
if you're suggesting something, then you should always, you, you should you should not only provide the, uh, you know, positive side of things, but also the negative side of things as well. Okay, folks. So what is the negative side of conducting management instru- uh, inspections? What do you think? Conducting frequent management, uh, you know, inspections can involve certain amount of costs, isn't it? So inspection costs needs to be incurred. So I'll just suggest that as well, okay, folks. However, the costs in relation to conducting these inspections needs to be considered as well. as uh you know as there are as this cost can increase depending on the number of franchises and the availability of management staffs as well this is a valid point isn't it so consider this and if cost exceeds benefit then we'd rather not do it but if benefit exceeds cost then it's always great to go ahead isn't it or we can think of another basis as well but yeah as of now i'm just uh, suggesting this for the moment and what else what other of course there are eight marks available here isn't it so I may, I could say that I could have scored around, uh, you know, two to three marks as of now, uh, but I need more, right? So uh, what else can be suggested? So uh, I believe as for the suggestions, I've already provided the suggestion over here somewhere, right? Uh, yeah, this one, right? So maybe I could just take this point from over here and mention it over here right however you know there's a, a one less point over here isn't it so i'll just add another point real quick as well there would be identifying quality issues and franchises therefore instead reporting on these okay i'll see as uh issues are identified on a quicker basis This reduces the risk of reputational damage as a result of dissatisfied customers. So, in this particular point, I was talking about the delay in communication, right, of quality related issues, right? And uh, in the last sentence, I'm just mentioning the impact of that. Had there been, you know, delayed communication, then the problem is that the, the customers will be dissatisfied and there would be reputational damage for Mandy Co. right? So by, you know, identifying these issues on an earlier stage, we're reducing that level of uh, risk, isn't it? So that's basically what is mentioned in that last point. And I'll get some additional marks for that. Uh, moving, coming back to the existing requirement of possible alternative methods, right? So, yeah, uh, we could see that, uh, yeah, for other aspects, Mandy Co. could keep track of the frequency of the cleaning shifts done, uh, you know, as there could be cleaning, uh, yeah, there we go. For example, the cleaning personnel can sign off on a record that keeps track of number of cleaning done 
for a particular restaurant or uh, restrooms on a daily basis, right? So what we're trying to say here is that uh, whenever, uh, you know, a particular cleaning personnel does a particular cleaning, then we can keep track of that, right? So by keeping track of that, we will be able to understand whether, uh, you know, the cleanliness is, you know, kept in, uh, like kept on par with the expectation that we have, isn't it? So uh, the idea here is that, you know, the number of times, like uh, we, we're just tracking the amount of times that a cleaning personnel has cleaned a particular room or area. Okay, folks, that's basically the overall idea here. <clears throat> now, what else? Another way in which we could keep track of this would be, we could also suggest or uh, the organization Or I could just mention Maddie itself, right? Maddie Co. Can think of implementing an online system that keep tracks of customer scores on a real time basis. So this is like kind of common nowadays, isn't it? So whenever you go to some, uh, you know, uh, some restaurants or cafes, they would provide you with a link where you can, you know, conduct this particular uh, surveys online itself. And the scores and stuff like that will be recorded on a real time basis itself. Whenever we want to have a look at the score, uh, the management can easily just you know, log into that particular system and view the score, isn't it? So this particular system could be suggested as an alternative, right? Uh, so uh, that's basically what I'm, I'm mentioning over here. And yeah, this would be much more beneficial than keeping or processing data on spreadsheets on a quarterly basis. As information will be available to the management on a real time basis. So what am I doing here? I'm just, you know, including some scenario specific information into my answer. Okay, folks, that's just it. And uh, what else? Uh, they could also, I shouldn't mention they in a report, right? So, yeah, Medico can also assess customer reviews through social media platforms. And I could, uh, you know, is there any drawback in doing this? Of course, it's social media, right? So obviously there are drawbacks. So we just have to think and comment on those. Uh, I could see that this could be a time consuming process. However, there are systems and softwares that can be used to automate this process. By doing this, or 
the main advantage of doing this would be that we or that the organization would be able to understand the process or sorry understand the reason behind customer satisfaction uh, customer dissatisfaction specifically and take action wherever necessary okay folks so what have i mentioned here i've just suggested that hey why don't you just assess the social media platforms for customer reviews like if that's the case then uh you know they would be able to understand specifically as to what is wrong with their organization and take corrective action uh on a timely basis as well isn't it i'll just mention that on a timely basis as well okay folks so that's basically another point that i can mention over here as well seems like we do have a really good amount of points as of now isn't it so i'm just gonna go with this itself and now moving on to the third part of the requirement which is the franchisees proposal now this would be uh i believe one of one of the much awaited areas that you wanted to discuss isn't it so an evaluation of the franchisees proposal simple as that all right let's have a look shall we so folks in order to answer this particular question first of all we need to have that conceptual understanding okay folks so first of all calm down i know that you're shocked by seeing a transfer pricing question within the exam so calm down and let's think about it right let's think about the uh theory, theory behind transfer pricing first of all and then move on to the scenario so uh you know what happens in transfer pricing there are two divisions divisions a and b right a is the seller and b is the buyer right so i'll just consider that very scenario itself i have a and b over here and a is selling products to b who is a in our scenario a is basically madico isn't it and b is basically the franchisee in the neighboring country isn't it so the franchisee is basically the buyer and Maddy is the seller so the situation here is that the franchisee has an option to buy the product at market price right at market price so the question is like should we let them do this or not isn't it so that's basically the idea here so we have to assess the potential benefits of doing this as well as the potential disadvantages of doing this as well simple as that so let's have a look at uh, at this particular instance shall we so uh i'm just going to open up the proposal once again so maddy uh, sorry the neighboring uh franchisee has asked if it can be charged for these at market price it would pay for the nearest equivalent products in its own country so we're comparing Maddie's product or this particular franchisee is comparing, uh, you know, Maddie's products. Or I'll just say M's products. With that of the nearest market equivalent. Why exactly would they be doing this? Or why do you think they would be doing this? This is where this is this is a tricky part. Okay, folks. Once you get this, you can get three or four points from that particular uh, idea itself. The reason why uh, this franchisee would be comparing uh, the Maddie's products with that of the nearest market equivalent would be that this particular thing would be would have a low price, right? It could be due to the fact that this nearest market equivalent. Would have a lower price as compared to Maddie's product, right? That's basically the reason. And uh, you know, some students tend to say that, hey, there is, there could be, it could be that since it's in an other country, right? Since it's in an other country, there could be transportation issues, 
right? There could be, uh, you know, tax tariffs and stuff like that, right? But ideally, you cannot say that here, right? Why exactly is that? Because if you think about it, like it was mentioned here somewhere, right? Uh, let's see. Yeah, food items can move freely between the two countries with no tariffs or administrative barriers. Okay, folks. So you like they canceled out one of your uh, relevant points, isn't it? You you won't be able to make a point in relation to tax or tariffs here anymore, right? So what other points can be made here? We know that the equivalent market equivalent uh, that these franchisees are talking about would have a lower price. That's basically obviously why they're uh, you know preferring that over Maddie's own products. So what would be the advantages and what would be the disadvantages? If we sell the particular product or if Madico sells the particular product at the lower price, is there an, would there be any impact? Most definitely yes. Okay, folks, uh, the impact is that if you look at it from positive side, franchisee, the franchisee could gain a competitive advantage in their market, right? So I'll just write that point uh, so that you can understand things in a bit more better sense. Uh, so what I'm saying is that, uh, you know, if Madiku, one second, yeah. If Madiku decides to sell their products at the market price of the franchisee's country, then There is a chance our country as this is lower as this would be lower compared to what Maddie is offering. There is a chance that the franchisee can get competitive can get a competitive advantage within their market as if the cost of acquiring the food items are lower, then they would be able to, then the franchisee would be able to sell this product, sell this at a competitive price. This is a valid point, isn't it? If they are getting uh, their products, the food items at a reasonable price or at a lower price, then they could, you know, sell it at a competitive price as well, right? So that's basically one of the greatest advantage of accepting the proposal, right? And uh, I could further add on to this point, right? I could also see that, uh, you know, uh, I, I, should, I should also link it to the scenario as well. Like if you think about it, when I was reading the scenario, somewhere in those particular lines, I noted one particular valid point that I can use here. What exactly is that? In the company information, I believe, let's see. Yeah. One of these franchise restaurants is located in a neighboring country where the Maddie brand is not widely recognized. In a market where Madico is not widely recognized, if they're selling their products at a competitive price, will they, you know, increase their reputation? Most definitely, yes. 
right? So I could add that particular point as well. Considering that Madiko is not widely recognized in the neighboring country, it would be beneficial to to get this competitive advantage by accepting the proposal hey folks so this is the positive side of things now let's talk about the negative side of things now so what exactly would be the problem in doing this or what exactly would be the problem in you know accepting this proposal uh you know proposed by the franchisee well uh one such instance that i could mention is that uh there could be it, this is just a you know a, a possibility i would say there could be a chance that there could be quality concerns isn't it as in or quality issues we don't know as to what exactly uh you know is the market equivalent product looks like like is it of the appropriate quality or not right that's basically something that needs to be questioned isn't it so i need to uh mention i'll be mentioning that as well uh although the franchisee suggests that uh there is an franchisee mentions that there is a market equivalent product which is cheaper than Madico's food items. The quality of this of the products must be assessed. in order to ensure that it meets Madico's brand brand quality or brand standards something like that okay folks was it that's another valid point right because there could be quality issues, right? And what is what is the impact of it? Let's let's explain that as well. Okay, folks. Uh, I'll just mention it over here. This is because uh, I believe we have a sentence that can be taken from the company information itself. I believe it's yeah this line so the idea behind uh you know Madico is that we they ensure that all the franchisees are operate operating up to the quality of Madico uh, in such a way that it's indis indistinguishable right uh the customers from a customer's point of view it's indistinguishable as to whether Madico uh you know is a separate company from its franchisee or not right so that's basically the idea so I'll just add that point over here I just need to take some of the lines, so I'll just mention it over here. This is because in order to make the franchise restaurant indistinguishable from one owned by Maddie. We have to ensure that the product quality or the service, my bad, it's a restaurant, right? So the service quality 
or the quality of the food items, right? That's more relevant here. The quality of the food items are not affected. Okay, folks, simple as that. So, what am I saying here? All I'm trying to say is that, uh, you know, there are cheaper goods, right? Uh, I could also provide a subheading over here, right? I'll say benefits. And demerits. Something like this. Okay, folks, so all I'm saying is that, uh, you know, there is a chance that the quality of this market equivalent would be lower than what Maddie is providing. Therefore, uh, you know, even though we're not, uh, even though the franchisee is not suggesting that, hey, we have a new product, I'll buy that. That's not what the franchisee is suggesting here, isn't it? So uh, the idea here is that is the price, right? Is the price, uh, you know, uh, really equivalent to that of Maddie? Right, that's basically the question that is put in place over here. Okay, folks. So, uh, yeah, if that is the case, then I should add one more liner here uh, because as of now I mentioned that although the franchisee mentions that there is a market equivalent product which is cheaper than Madico's food item, uh, the quality of the product needs to be assessed in order to ensure that it meets the uh, you know Madico brand standards. This is because in order to make the uh, franchise restaurant indistinguishable. I'm just going to correct this from uh, one owned by Maddie. They have to ensure that the quality of the food items is not affected as well, isn't it? Hmm. Or maybe I could remove this last line. You know what? I'll just remove this last line because that kind of, you know, changes the message that I'm trying to give here, right? So the message that I'm trying to give here is more on the price rather than on the product itself, right? So, uh, yeah. So folks, speaking about the demerits here, first of all, if you think about it, uh, you know, the franchisee mentions that they have found a market equivalent of Madico's products, right? So there is a chance that the quality of uh, of these products of this products in the neighboring country may be different as of Madico, thus making it difficult. to determine the market price. So folks, the idea that I'm trying to convey here is that in the neighboring country, there is a market equivalent product of Madico's products, right? So what if there is a chance that, uh, you know, this particular product may not be on par with that of Madico's product? Then ideally, the market uh, price is not that accurate, right? So therefore, we have to redetermine the market price in their neighboring country or in the franchisee's neighboring country itself. Okay, folks, so that's basically uh, the idea over here. So it's, it's kind of a difficult process. And uh, another point is that uh, if we are using a different approach in determining the market price of uh, for the franchisee, in the neighboring country, then there would be a considerable amount of time that needs to be invested in negotiating The transfer price right uh, time uh, time and cost right negotiate yeah so we're talking about a new country 
right? And, uh, you know, we may have to arrange some managers to go to that particular country to negotiate the appropriate transfer price, isn't it? And that can involve a lot, lot, lot of time and cost as well. So we're just mentioning that particular simple point, right? And what else can be mentioned? <clears throat> Another point that I could think of would be Yeah, if you think about it if one branch or if one franchisee or I would I would much rather say uh, if there are different approaches to determining the transfer price in each franchisee then this may not enable comparison of financial performance okay folks because if each of these organizations are using different means to determine their transfer price or different transfer prices then we cannot compare between franchisees then right so that's basically what is mentioned over here of these franchisees and what else I have one, two, three, four, five points as of now. I would need three more, isn't it? Well, two more. The final point would be a conclusion. So, yeah. And, uh, yeah, what else can be uh, mentioned, guys? So, there's an inherent uh, limitation for determining the transfer price uh, on the basis of market price. Okay, folks, the reason is that, uh, or the problem is that market prices are variable, isn't it? So as of now, the franchisee, for the franchisee, this particular market price is lower compared to Maddie. But there would come, come a time when the market price can increase way above uh, Maddie price as well, isn't it? At that point in time, will we, will we be changing the transfer price policy? That's another question that needs to be asked, isn't it? So I'll just mention that point as well. Uh, An inherent limitation of determining transfer price on the basis of or as market price is that market price can be fluctuating. Therefore, if the franchise, uh, if the market price increases in the future, the franchisee may propose to change the transfer pricing policy again in the future isn't it so that's another demerit because we cannot afford to continuously you know change the transfer pricing policy uh, again and again right so that's another point that you can mention and uh what else if the transfer price or not the transfer price if the market price is set based on the franchisees home country then Madico will be vulnerable to currency fluctuation risks as well isn't it that's also another possibility or a possible demerit that could happen as well 
So I should provide my final conclusion now, isn't it? So my conclusion would be that uh, Maddie Ku could consider accepting the proposal for a limited period of time in order to increase recognition within the neighboring country however in the long run the demerits out weights the benefits simple as that and I'll also provide a conclusion over here to get my some of those professional marks as well so I've already completed my answer. I'm just uh, doing some final touches to it, right? So what all things have I done here? I've structured my answer in the form of a report, isn't it? I mentioned the two from date and subject, and I've structured the overall uh, structure of my answer in the form of headings and subheadings as well, isn't it? So this is basically what you have to do in, the, in your exam as well. And uh, yeah, I should also mention a conclusion for the performance report as well. So based on all the points that we mentioned, is the performance report appropriate? No, not really, isn't it? There's a lot more changes that needs to be made. So I'll just mention that. Overall, the performance report is not fit for the organization. Objectives as uh, due to the reasons mentioned about. Okay, folks, that's just a final concluding line. Simple as that. Uh, I won't be needing any conclusions over here. And yeah, that's just it, isn't it? So for evaluations, you need to provide a conclusion because that's what, what that's what this is, isn't it? So you have to provide, like whenever the requirement contains the word evaluate, provide the positives, provide the negatives, as well as provide your conclusion based on these positives and negatives as well. Okay, folks? So that's something that you need to do. And uh, yeah, that uh, by doing that, you will also get professional marks for analysis and evaluation as well. Okay, folks? That's basically the reason. So uh, yeah. So that's basically how you do this particular question. I hope you understood all the points. And, uh, you know, by practicing more questions, you should be able to do this a bit more quicker. As of now, I've been explaining a lot of points here and there, which is why it would have taken, you know, this much amount of time. But, uh, you know, once you start practicing, once you practice more and more questions, 50 mark, 25 mark as well, uh, you know, it'll be a lot more quicker. Okay, folks, so strictly follow the time strategy. Okay, folks, that's really important. Uh, you only have like one, one and a half hour, uh, hour, you know, to complete this particular, uh, you know, question. So uh, within the first, I would say 15 to 20 minutes, try to read through the requirements, try to read through the scenario. And then for the rest of the time, type in your answer. Okay, folks, type in your answer, just like how we uh, did just now. Okay, folks. And uh, yeah, always try to relate scenario instances. Okay, folks, as, as you may have noted in the question that we did just now. I was always thinking of the scenario itself rather than what I've learned through my notes and stuff like that, right? So always use scenario information, think from the scenario's perspective and then provide an answer uh, to you to the 50 mark question. Okay, folks, that's basically how you can easily tackle such questions. So that's basically all I wanted to cover in this particular session. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, I hope, uh, I wish you the very best for your upcoming exam as well. Okay, folks, so thank you so much, guys. I wish you all the very best. Thank you.